You are listening to the enhanced version of the Jeff Rubin, Jeff Rubin Show. This would usually be the part of the show where I say that if you're hearing this message, that means you are listening on some sort of Apple device or maybe on iTunes. That is no longer necessarily the case because starting this week, the enhanced version of the podcast is also going to be posted on YouTube. Doesn't matter how you're listening. What you really need to know is that when you hear this noise... Take a look at the screen because there is a picture I want to show you to help illustrate what we are talking about. And I have now taught you all that I know. You must go out on your own and enjoy the show. Here we go. Jeff Rubin Show. I am Jeff Rubin, and I am unbelievably excited about this week's guest because on the phone, all the way from Germany, I'm saying it, I can't believe he's doing this, please give a big Jeff Rubin, Jeff Rubin welcome to Klaus Teuber, the creator of Settlers of Catan. Thank you so much for joining us, Klaus. Yeah, hello, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Also on the line, we have Klaus's son, Guido, who lives in America. He's going to help us a little bit with some of the translation, and he manages the Catan brand on this side of the world. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. And I'm glad you're both here because Catan is a German game. Klaus, you designed it in 1995, but it's only in the past few years that it's really caught on in America, and it really is catching on. You guys have sold over 15 million copies. Wired called it the perfect board game. There was a CEO in the Wall Street Journal talking about how it's the new golf. So, Klaus, my first question for you is how do you actually pronounce the game? Because I say Settlers of Catan, but I've also heard Settlers of Catan. <laughs> yeah, I understand both. <laughs> Uh, in Germany, we say Catan, and uh, okay, in the U.S., you say Catan. I think that's okay. That's a relief, because I've been saying Catan and talking about it so much that if I had to say Catan for the next hour, I don't know that I could handle yeah, it. Okay, in, uh, in the U.S., uh, my name is uh, pronounced as uh, Tuba. <laughs> so normally in Germany, it's called Teuba. Uh, so there's also a difference, but uh, I, I understand that. Here in America, a lot of the most popular board games have been the most popular board games for over 50 years. I'm talking about things like Monopoly, there's Scrabble or Battleship. Whereas in Germany, there seems to be this thriving board game community that loves trying new games and discovering them and talking about them. When and how did board games become important in German culture? Yeah, um, you must go back to the 70s, last century. And we had uh, in, uh, in uh, Germany um, uh, uh, three pillars. So one pillar was building clubs of gaming. The second pillar was uh, writing news uh, papers about games, was what was uh, very new to do that. Uh, and the third were fairs, um, uh, gaming events, and all these three pillars. Also, the uh, Germany in the Game of the Year, the prize, Game of the Year, all these pillars um, evolved uh, yeah, a very busy uh, gaming uh, community. Yeah, I think the four pillars were the reason for that. So board games in Germany are reviewed in newspapers? Yeah, in, uh, in very big newspapers uh, called Die Zeit and Frankfurt Allgemeine in the 80s and 70s. Um, and so you see, um, bring games more in the spotlight of big culture and uh, not only uh, games for, for children, also for adult people. How did you become a board game designer, Klaus? How did you get into this in the first place? Oh, this long story. <laughs> I will try. It was a time I was a dental technician and I had a dental lab in the 80s. And on, it was a very hard time for me because the, yeah, the, the, to, to, to get work was very hard. And uh, the dentists were very hard too. So in the evening when I come home, I need something uh, to uh, escape, uh, a re refuge, something like that. And so for me was, uh, it was uh, to, to escape this um, uh, hard day work to create games. And uh, I did it only for, for myself, not I didn't have had in mind uh, to earn money, but that only now, to have this 
to create this wonderful world and uh, to uh, to recover from the day. And so I started in the, in the early 80s with yeah, designing games for myself and tried that with my later with um, friends and with my, uh, my family. And so after six or seven years, someone said to me, oh, you should bring one of the games to a company. And yeah, so I did. And the first game I published then was Barbarossa was in the year 1988 and later come, uh, came other games and so it was uh, yeah uh, for, for me uh, a, a good way to to escape the everyday life and to, to have something for me to have this refuge. I had kind of assumed that most board game designers had a history in maybe math or software or something like that. Is that true? Are you are you something of an exception? Oh, I I love mathem mathematics and uh, geography and uh, history, and I think uh, these components also with the possibility to to create with my hands something because of my former profession to be a dental technician. All this together, this mix, uh, I think, gave me the possibility to to, to create game. It's also was my hobby in earlier times to, to write little stories and to paint pictures, but I had not not enough skill of, for 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 all of that, only a little bit in in, in every direction. So, uh, but I think the mix uh, gave me the possibility to create games. Yeah, it's interesting when you talk about that you were into geography and math and history because those are certainly all things that you can see reflected in Catan. How far into your board game designing career did you start working on what would become the Settlers of Catan? Catan was uh, published in 1995, and uh, I um, published game uh, seven years ago. The first game was 70 years ago. Seven years ago, not 70. 70 years ago. And I think it were eight to nine games until 1995. And what was the genesis of Catan? How did that project get started? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I love histories and uh, I read uh, a lot of books about history, also of, uh, of um, <clears throat> uh, discovery. And I was fascinated from the Vikings, um, that they take the ships and uh, move into the open sea and um, they uh, arrived in uh, Iceland. Uh, which was not settled uh, in, in these um, ages. And uh, these stories uh, gave me the, the background to create a game for settlement and for escaping. And uh, um, start, this was a very, very uh, big game. And, and I was not such an uh, yeah, experienced uh, in designer at that time that I had the feeling only to, to make it smaller. So I want to have everything in this game, though. So, from uh, in, uh, discovering a, a settlement and knights and everything. And uh, so it, it took uh, some years uh, to bring it to the form we uh, know today. I'm surprised to hear you say that that's how it came about because when you play the Settlers of Catan, the strongest feature, what's really striking about the game is the gameplay itself and just how balanced and how elegant and simple the rules are. So it's interesting to hear that the game actually started with a focus on story and history and character, and there should be knights. Is yeah. that how you start most games? The starting is, is a story. Um, so um, my first game was uh, The Riddle Master, Barbarossa and the Riddle Master, and then I read a book before um, from the School of the Riddle Masters. I think it's, a, it's an American author who, who write that. Um, Patricia McKillip, I don't know if you know her. She gave me uh, the story and I, I love the story and uh, tried to, to make a, a game with, with riddles and to solve riddles with wizards and, and all that. And so most of my games, the most of my games have a story and uh, in the background and I try uh, to experience this story in a game. Um, and this is uh, a wish I ever had when I created a game, and this wish was uh, in my uh, back of, of my head. And when it's very deep in the, in the back of my head, then uh, it became become a, a big ch chance 
to, to get ideas for that. And when I have the first ideas uh, to bring the story in a game, uh, then begins, begins the development. What was the very first version of Settlers of Catan like? Because I imagine it didn't just come out fully formed. It had to go through several iterations. Yeah, the first, uh, very first version had uh, um, square tiles. Wow. Now they're hexagons. And the hexagons are kind of iconic, so it, it's hard to imagine squares. What else was different about the game? Yeah, but um, when, you, when you have a, a lot of uh, square tiles, um, uh, and then you have points in mid one, square tile and you have three landscapes in this one square tile and you lay that uh, um, uh, together then you will see that there will be a hexagonal he hexagon structure <laughs> I, I have that on my website uh, if uh, someone is uh, interested you can see that how long did it take between the first design and what became the eventual product because it seems like the whole thing and i've already been wrong once but it seems like the whole thing is fine tuning and kind of figuring out uh, how to balance it yeah <clears throat> it took uh, three to four years because in this time as I told you, I, I was in uh, um, uh, in this uh, dental lab, and uh, I had a lot of work there. And so there were, uh, um, yeah, in a week, perhaps five or, or six hours to to um, develop the game. So it took a long time, and you you have to play it, you have to test it. And um, what I never wanted was to um, have to can you say expel my friends? No, not expel. Uh, to, to alienate them. Yeah, to just that I say, oh, and, uh, we do not want to play again. <laughs> yeah, it should be fun. And so you cannot play it so often. You have, you need a uh, um, time be between to consider all the things which were wrong. So, um, and then perhaps it took sometimes uh, half a year um, until I played it again. But in this half year, there was a development. Now, this is where I'm glad that Guido is on the phone with us, because Guido, you were something of a guinea pig uh, here. You, you, you must have gone through so many versions of Catan. What was that like from your perspective? Yeah, it was interesting when we, we gathered for uh, typically Saturday, Sundays, um, and um, had our um, the game tests, and uh, it, was, it was a wonderful family activity. And um, there, there was a litmus test when whenever it was... You know, whenever we were engaged in the in the game and and stuff, the, obviously that that was pointing towards uh, success. But then at times, uh, especially in the initial uh, stages, uh, it would happen that you know I would look at my watch or longingly at my guitar to to get back to to practice, or my my brother would uh, you know uh, look at his comics, and my mom had to do run some errands. So at that point, we knew okay. So um, I think my dad knew that. Uh, it's time to uh, take the game, uh, tweak it, and then um, you know next weekend we would uh, do another run, and then um, the improvements. And then when we had those, basically we knew that the the game had a perfect uh, shape when when we were all focused and um, and and just engaged and and um, completely immersed in in the game. And so that I think um, that that was always a very good indicator to you. Um, Right, uh, whether the game was good or not. Do you remember? Uh, was there a, a specific change, something of a, an aha moment, where something that was uh, some tweak, some specific tweak, made everyone realize, wait a minute, this is actually really, really fun. Yeah. Um, so that 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 was, I think, those were the most redeeming and rewarding um, moments. You know, you 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 just you play the games, and all of a sudden, uh, things just connect and snap. They they just Put, they're, they're put together and and you just all of a sudden you, you the light bulb goes off and, and you have these these moments where you, where you just in terms of the game design you just get you, you solve like a riddle or you, you solve like a, a problem that, that you've been dealing and you often you come from different sides so you have a new idea you, you try to, to to tweak that and then to experiment with that and then you, it kind of uh, puts the the game in, in balance in other ways and then if you find that one approach that works and puts the game in balance that's that's truly a rewarding moment what were some of the problems in Catan that were hard to solve what were some of the things you got stuck on yeah one problem was that um, people um, collect their cards 
So um, they have uh, we to have uh, enough of, of wood and when they have no wool or no sheep, uh, then wait until they will get it. And so this was the need to create a rubber. Um, ah. <laughs> but people uh, uh, are they are anxious that the rubber come and so they, they have to, tr to trade. This was the reason that for negotiation um, that um, the fear that the rubber come, comes. I feel like we're getting some insight into the villainous origins of the robber character. And it's interesting you say that because when I explain the game to people, um, and I've explained it so many times now, I've, I've tried to teach so many people the game that I, I have like a string you can pull and I just go through the rules. But I explain with the seven that, um, you know, kind of one of the details of the game is that if a seven is rolled you have to, and you have more than seven cards, you have to discard them. Yeah. And I always say when I'm explaining the rules, you know, the idea is just you want to spend what you have. You can't just hoard cards. And it seems like that was the intention of the rule. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The intention was was, was not to uh, annoy, yeah, or annoy the people. Uh, but but what is uh, it was uh, um, necessary uh, that the game will run. But it makes for some moments that are so fun, and they are annoying. But uh, it's it's this it's the dynamics of the game because if you have more than seven cards, you're doing pretty well. You're getting a lot of cards. You're riding pretty high. Then someone rolls a seven, and like the every everyone knows what happened. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's just one of those moments that kind of happens in the game." Yeah, this is, um, you mean that's just a very uh, um, very important moment in the game. It's annoying, but it's fun because yeah. uh, <laughs> you know you, you you're doing well if so, that happens to you. Should you look psychology? Psychology. Okay. Uh, Psychologically? Well, let's hear what you were going to say. You might be talking about people reading minds. Yeah, will I draw uh, the card uh, from him or from her? Or, and, and then you can uh, say, oh, not from me. And uh, there is then um, a kind uh, of um, skill in the game, which is not tactic, which is not strategy, but it, which, which is social, that you uh, have to, to speak with people and to... Uh, Show them your point of, of view, and, uh, and and I sometimes say uh, that uh, most uh, mostly the gamer which uh, who was that man nomay yaman am besten wine to wine wine the most uh, will be the winner. I've definitely seen that happen where someone just kind of mentally checks out and they're like, I'm not going to do anything. Eventually, come back and win the game, and that's maybe one of the things that makes it so fun. Mario Kart does this too, where there's mechanics in place that keep the people in the back from never being too far out of being back in it and actually winning the whole thing. Because yeah. if you start doing well, here's an interesting thing. I'm wondering if this is, maybe this is just my friends, but uh, with the robber, so if someone rolls a seven, this is one of the few opportunities that you have in Catan to really, I'm like trying to overpronounce it now. It's one of the few opportunities you really have in Catan to really like attack someone to punch them you know it's not like um it's not like monopoly where you're taking money from them or uh you know like a video game where you're shooting at them or attacking them there's very few chances to just directly assault someone and when you roll a seven you get to move the robber that's pretty much it but there's this interesting thing that happens and maybe this is just the people i know where everyone's trying to convince the person who rolled the seven that they should be attacking the other people. And everyone just immediately starts, oh, well, look at this guy. He's got seven points. He's got some development cards down. You got to be worrying about him. Uh, I, I had, uh, one time, I, I, or one day, I, I got a letter and uh, a, a woman wrote me that uh, um, the rubber led into the divorce. <laughs> but uh, I wrote back that could not be the rubber. Uh, I think there was, uh, was something wrong in, in, in the partnership before. I mean, if anything, it was probably how few ore tiles there are. That's probably what caused the divorce. <laughs> I've seen, I've, I've seen uh, the robber testing a lot of relationships, and it makes for very uh, curious uh, social situations. And um, Jeff, what you mentioned, this, uh, this social situation where uh, people are trying to convince, you know, not to, to put the, the robber in themselves, so to, to kind of, this, this whole negotiation and, and kind of, that, that's, it's really fun uh, to, to do that. And, and um, I think it's one of the, the really intriguing um, parts. And 
it's it's certainly I've seen it in so many um, game circles, and um, you know also you see sometimes you see sites people who are very sweet, soft spoken, all of a sudden become very tough uh, negotiators, and and so that that's also really fascinating when you you play games uh, board games with people, and uh, in this game it, it it you know you you see like another. Uh, side like uh, a, a, an even bigger picture of of what a person uh, can be, and then they can because they it's a it's a make believe uh, world, right? It's it's like a little escape. You you can afford to take on you know show another side of yourself. Yeah, there's an element of role playing yeah. there because I'm uh, in real life a very non confrontational. I the idea of haggling with a car salesman, uh, you know, kind of gives me anxiety. But in Catan. I am a motherfucker to deal with. I, did, I love, like, making deals and pulling them away and being real cocky. And so th there is a role-playing element to the game, too. I, I hope no one, uh, but not like a Final Fantasy or Dungeons & Dragons role-playing element. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's true. There's a, a big element of role-playing. And it, I think it has its roots in, in the, the storytelling because all of the games are really uh, rooted in, in storytelling at, at first. And so I think the, the role-playing... Part of it is is um, an extension of that. It's interesting uh, because we've talked a little bit about how the dice and just the math of it is very sound, and then there's this social element too. And but it seems like a lot of people are now playing Catan uh, in the non-board game forms on their iPhone, their iPad, online, on Xbox. Um, I know people that still play it all the time on Xbox. You can go, you can turn on your Xbox at any hour of the night and be playing Catan versus anyone in the world, uh, which is cool. But do you think that, uh, is there a problem there where some of that social element of, is lost? Does it change the game? No, uh, I think it's uh, only um, an, uh, surrogate um, or compensation or, um, for a, a game with, uh, with real um, people. Um, sometimes uh, you have no, no people to, to play with and what you, you would like to, to play Catan then, yeah. That's my whole life. That's like, that's every moment of my life. I'm always ready to play Catan. Just sometimes people aren't around. Where do you see those online gaming fitting into the whole Catan ecosystem? It's, it's a part of the product now. Are you involved in those? I'm involved in that, yeah, because I, I was involved in the development and also uh, sometimes I play there. And uh, I, uh, it's, a, it's a good replacement for for um, uh, when you have no possibility to play with real people. Yeah, when you just need a quick fix. P wait, so you play online? Where? Or and do you play versus strangers? Sometimes, yeah, with strangers or with friends, people I know. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, Do you introduce yourself? Do you uh, no. say, do people know they're playing the creator of the game? No, no. <laughs> I, I have a, 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 a character and a, Nobody knows that. I have another character, and as people, um, uh, yeah, know that after after some time. But I, now I have a new new one. It's better to to play without these, uh, yeah. The pressure. Yeah, we, 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 I have. They will set the rubber more to me because uh, then I'm the eventer, and they 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 mean that um, when the eventer should should play that very good. <laughs> and so the rubber should go to him, and then, then that's. Uh, I, I like it more to to play the game uh, without that people know where I am. Do you win when you play? How are you incredibly good at the game, or are you just another player? No, I'm not so good in the game. Other, my sons are better in the game. <laughs> Guido, is that true? Well, I share with my dad the experience of uh, people gang up on you right away. They say, you're the designer, you're the designer. <laughs> you know, let's put, of course, we're going to put the robber on you. And so I'm getting annihilated. As you said, though, you can come back even if you're trailing. Um, but uh, so it, it, is, it is an interesting dynamic where people just assume. And then you try to explain, well, it's also about luck and, you know, it's just <laughs> but uh, that, that is an experience that, that we share. What do you think is the balance of luck versus skill in the game? Yeah, I, uh, I think uh, luck is, is not so important in the, in the game or ha has not such a high range because it's a kind of luck um, which you can influence. You, you, you have the decision to, to settle on a, a, an eight or on a two. And uh, you see where will I have to build my my next settlement? And 
so when sometimes they will be rolled off in the three and um, on a, on a, on a wheat, and uh, then you can say, okay, that's it's very lucky because the three will not be rolled so often. But uh, in the in the reality, sometimes you just get nothing but threes. Yeah, it, it happens, but then you get always uh, uh, the same resources. And uh, what will you do with eight uh, grain or, or eight wheat? Uh, so you have to, to trade with other people or you fear that there will be a monopoly card or other things. So I think there is a compensation of, of luck um, or people will not trade with you. And because uh, you have so uh, many uh, victory points or more victory points, I think um, luck is... Um, compensated uh, with other uh, possibilities of the game. I recently picked up Traders and Barbarians of Catan, which is the most recent expansion to the game, and I thought one of the more interesting components of it uh, was there were these things called the event cards that replace the dice. And basically, you're replacing the dice with a deck of cards that represents what should be the statistical output of yeah. the dice. You know, mostly sevens, very few twos and twelves. Uh, as, as you know, it theoretically should roll out. Yeah. And I thought there was something very interesting there where it feels like there's this option where you, you don't have to play. Of course, you can always play with the dice and it's always fun to roll the dice. But there's this option to kind of correct for luck. Mm -hmm. But I do not like, uh, I personally do not like this this option because I, I like uh, more um, this feeling uh, uh, of, of real life. Uh, I don't know what happened tomorrow. I don't know what happened the uh, next day. So sometimes there will be um, extension of luck sometimes. Um, and I have to, to, to handle that. Uh, and uh, when I have these cards, now I see, okay, uh, there were uh, five uh, or four or six. No, one will be, yeah, one will come and, and then it's uh, um, over. So, uh, but I made it uh, for people who, who like that. And I think uh, every, everybody had another taste for, for gaming and another feeling. But I personally um, like the, the dice more. I once played a game where we had limited table space. So we just gave one person a dice and we had that person keep rolling the dice for everybody. And you know, that should be the same. It's not like when I roll the dice, I'm, I can, I'm good at it and I can roll the number I want. It's really the same thing, but the game was a lot less fun just because yeah. you're missing that thrill where you're looking for an eight and you manage to roll it. Yeah, yeah it's just to, to have the, the dice in, in your hand means to have the, your destiny or your fate in the hand. And um, this is, I think, uh, this, this makes the fun yeah? because you are um, uh, your, your own... Uh, uh, Fate. There's also a degree of authorship to the game because unlike, you know, some traditional American board games, your name is right there on the box. It says The Settlers of Catan by Klaus Tuber. Are there any other designers whose work inspired you or whose work you admire? Just who, who are your other favorite board game designers? Yeah, I um, like very much uh, games of uh, Sid Saxon, so um, one of the first games Oh, I uh, learned that uh, it's, uh, it, there will be also games for adults, was uh, Acquire on Sid Saxon. What is it called? Acquire. By who? Sid Saxon. Sid Saxon, okay. Yeah. And later then Wolfgang Kramer, also a popular uh, German uh, designer. Sid Saxon is a uh, US uh, and uh, Wolfgang Kramer, uh, a German designer. And so the um, game, I, Guido, how was the name of the game we played when you were eight or, or nine years? Was it, was it Twixt? Uh, no, it was a car racing uh, game, you remember? You couldn't hold all the cards in your hand, and every time you have to sort them, you run uh, five meters behind the chair <laughs> in another room and to, to to sort them. Yes, I, I remember it. I'm um, we we have a, a German term for that, but formula formula uh, formula, formula one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's interesting that you remember the rules of the game before you remember the name of the game itself. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the, the, the board and uh, the cards and, and our, uh, these things, the feeling of the game, I remember first. Yeah, that's right. But uh, this was one of the games for Wolfgang Kramer. And there were some games bring me to, to gaming and, and later then to... Uh, event, uh, in, event games. I alluded to this earlier, but there's been a lot of press written about Catan as its popularity has grown. 
And it seems like you can't write an article about Catan without comparing it to the most popular American board game of all time, Monopoly. So do you ever play Monopoly? Yeah, I played it a lot uh, when I was uh, a child. And uh, then with uh, 15 or 16 years, I didn't play any games because uh, there were other uh, things more important, like girls and such things and music. And uh, I started again with gaming with uh, 21 and 22. And uh, my wife and me, we were in a, uh, I was by, by the army and we were in a, uh, uh, in a, in a, in a, pretty much in a rural, uh, very isolated area. Yeah, I said eight. Yeah, okay. And uh, so the evenings uh, we were very. Uh, yeah, we we, we try to find something for us besides television and such things. And so we we searched for for games, uh, playing games. And uh, chess is uh, a good game, but it's more for me a sport. So um, one will be uh, even the better gamer after a while. And so this, this was the beginning of, of gaming. What makes chess a sport as opposed to a game? Yeah, be because um, when I play chess, I, I have to um, to plan uh, a lot of... Uh, moves? Uh, let, let, yeah, let a lot of moves uh, ahead. And, and so when uh, I'm uh, skilled that I can do that better than my op opponent, then I have a better chance. So I think I can train that. And, and, and in sport, you can train too. And, and so um, who trained uh, the most will win or will have a better chance to win. So that's, that's the reason. That's For me, it's more sport, mind sport. In Catan, though, you do have to plan many moves ahead. There's maybe not as many possibilities as chess, but uh, there is, a lot of the things you're saying still apply there. Is Catan a sport? No, because uh, I can uh, play Catan also with a glass of ro red wine. And uh, it's, uh, for me, more a game of uh, social uh, relations and uh, of uh, yeah, playing um, uh, from my tummy. Was it a Bauchhausspiel? With uh, intuition? Intuition to play it, um, we say in Germany, aus dem Bauch heraus. Um, I, I don't know the, the uh, American translation. It's, it's, it's an intuitive uh, gameplay. Um, uh, I can't think of a, a matching um, uh, idiom right now. Yeah. But I think uh, that, that's right on. Like to... yeah. and, and so uh, I like games uh, where I have not. Uh, where you don't have to to work hard or uh, yeah, yeah. that are that, that feel like work it's yeah there is a difference um even when i play another german style board game like puerto rico which is a, an amazing game there is a lot more work involved a lot more planning whereas Catan is um still a difficult game to play and there's a lot of strategy but it, it's exactly as much strategy as i want it to be you know what we hear a lot uh jeff from um people we talk to and uh, especially when you when you have um, somebody using a technology job, for instance, and they're really just processing and analyzing all day long, and then they said, "But you don't want to shut off your brain in the evening or something." And, and then so what they said about Catan is that uh, they, they love to sit together and and, and have this, and, and still the, the brain is working, but it doesn't feel like work. And and that's I think for some reason that. Uh, the, the game fulfills a certain need um, for that, and um, that that is, and in, in indeed, uh, for a lot of people, it doesn't feel like work, and yet it's intellectually stimulating. I want to get back to Monopoly, though, because the games are often compared. Why do you think that is? Oh, perhaps uh, because they are both successful, although uh, Monopoly is uh, more successful than, than Catan when you see all the years. Which it's got a head start. Yeah. Uh, so I think um, there's no. When you compare the games, they they have other mechanics. That's, that's, uh, I think it's a success. Why you compare that? Why do you think Monopoly has been as popular for as long as it is? Because uh, generally people don't really like it. it. The games aren't often finished, and all of these articles are talking about how it's time that a new board game 
you know, the time for a, a new board game to come and take its place is sort of the most prominent board game has come. But it was very popular, and it, it remains very popular for, I don't know, 75 years? You know, it's a good game. It's a game which uh, appears to people, and uh, I think they, they like it to, to earn money, to have money. So you must see that a game is um, sometimes uh, for people... Uh, the possibility to to refuge from uh, everyday uh, life, and um, in a, in a game they can have perhaps not so so much money, but in a game they can now have money. And uh, when you when they lose the game, okay, it's only a game. Perhaps they make faults and they make mistakes, but they can uh, try it again. So it's not real life. When you make in real life a, a mistake, then you will be punished. Uh, but in the game, you will not be punished. You can on, only punish yourself <laughs> when you, when you uh, cannot lose the game. But uh, that's, I think that's uh, the reason you can that uh, experience with Monopoly too, to have another little life uh, beneath, beneath your, your everyday life. As someone who has obviously spent a lot of time thinking about gameplay, and created one of the most popular games of any kind of the past century. Do you have any interest in video games? Yeah, I, I play uh, uh, video games too. I, uh, I played Civilization from the Saxon, uh, the oh, of gamer, course. and uh, wait, Civilization? Civilization, not the last version, but um, oh, that's Sid, that's Sid Meier. I think you're still talking about the guy oh, who made the choir. Yeah, 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 Sid Meier. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, glad we, got, glad we caught that. <laughs> Yeah, and also I like role, role play, playing games um, where you can uh, uh, build a character on. And um, that's my favorite um, Heroes of Might and Magic um, because it's turn based. I do not uh, like games uh, which are not turn based, which are uh, real, uh, real time based because it's too exhausting for me. <laughs> Now I'm uh, 60 years old next year, and um, so I, I, I prefer more more of these uh, turn-based games. What video games are you playing now? Is there anything recent you've enjoyed? The, recent, the last one uh, was um, uh, uh, King, King's Quest. King's Quest? Uh, what I... No, King's Quest is old. Yeah, it's old, but... Uh, that, that wouldn't be the last game you played. King's Bounty, what? King's Bounty. The new version. King's Bounty. Yeah, made, made from, from Russian uh, developers. It's a very, very good game. I can re recommend that who likes uh, video games. It's only turn-based, so uh, you can uh, also have to put it to drink a glass of wine, and you have not uh, to be so much involved that your uh, blood pressure <laughs> will uh, rise uh, to heights. Catan has existed and been popular. It won the Spiel. Let me so, let me know if I'm getting this one right. Spiel des Jahres. Spiel des Jahres. Spiel des Jahres, mm -hmm, yeah. which is sort of the most prestigious board gaming award many years ago, but it seems like it's only recently catching on in America. Are, are sales of it increasing recently, or yeah. am I just meeting more people that are talking about it? I think if I may um, jump in, um, I think there's been a there's been a groundswell, and um, it, it used to be a, a, a small group knowing about this and, and uh, you know, about, about this prestigious award. And I think just word of mouth and over the years and, and the increasing popularity uh, here uh, also for those German style, European style board games has really bled out into a broader um, audience, to a broader audience. And, and so all of a sudden that, that has become kind of a, a household name and it's, it's, it's been accepted by much wider audience as, as uh, you know, an indicator of, uh, of what's a high quality game. That's humble that you think that because European style board games have been popular here, that made Catan popular because I think the European style board games are gaining popularity because of Catan. It's kind of a gateway drug to the rest of them. Board games have something of a different lifespan of a video game, whereas a video game comes out yeah. and a year later, um, it's tired, it's old, it looks old, and if you look five years later, it looks ancient. Yeah, that's the advantage of a board game, I think, um, because the video game, um, uh, you have no, um, you have only the computer as an opponent, and uh, uh, so uh, after a time, it's boring because it's all, always the same when you play it again, and with people, uh, each game is another game because. Uh, when you play a game, it's a little bit like theater. Uh, you you have uh, um, 
yeah, a book, uh, how you can play that, but people will take their role and play it in, in their way. So, so each game will be an, an, another game and a new game. And I think that's the advantage of board games because uh, people um, um, make the game and uh, use the rules of the game to make their, their, their own game. I have some Catan rule questions. Some of them are kind of house rules, and I want to run them by you. You set the record straight forever. Ready? Okay. First of all, longest road. I've seen this played both ways. Let's say I have six roads, so I have the longest road card. Yeah. Then someone else on their turn builds a sixth road, yeah. tying me. Do I retain the longest road, or does nobody have the longest road until no. someone builds seven roads? You retain it uh, until uh, your uh, opponent have one road more than you. Got it. Okay. This is kind of a, a confusing one. My friends and I have developed this economy of something called port trading, where someone had this idea to make a trade like this once, and now it's a regular part of our games, and I want to verify that this is acceptable. All right, it's my turn, and I have a settlement on a wheat port, right? Yeah. Can someone trade me two... Someone else, they, can they give me two wheat and another card... And then I turn those in on the wheat port to give them the card they want. Let me try it again. No, you. So, you cannot do that. No, um, because it's not your turn. No, it's my. But if if it's my turn, I'm making the trade. Like I'm the player with the wheat port. Okay, when you when it's your turn, you have the possibility to trade with your wheat harbor every time in your turn. Basically, what I'm doing is I want to offer someone else access to my wheat harbor for a free card. So they give me two wheat and a wood and they want a clay i don't have any clay but if they give me two wheat and a wood i'll keep the wood turn in the two wheat to make a clay and then give them the clay all in kind of one movement yeah when it's your turn you can do that okay but uh, Guido, I, I think i understand i understood that's it, it, right. yeah, it's absolutely that's that's absolutely i can confirm that yeah okay great moving on tournament rules i've heard that you can kind of condense the game and that they do this uh, when people are playing in Catan tournaments, where you start off the game by building a set. Usually, you would build a settlement and a settlement. Mm -hmm. Instead, you build a settlement and then an upgraded settlement, which is a city. Yeah. Is that is that kosher? Does that still count as Catan? Those games count. But it's only a, a, a way that um, the, the game starts uh, uh, faster, and. Mm -hmm. In a tournament, uh, there's not so much time for the games, and this is the reason for that. I, I personally um, uh, prefer to start with two settlements. Oh, of course, who doesn't? But sometimes you don't have time to fully play a game of Catan, but you want to do it anyway. So this is kind of a way to... We've used that as a way to kind of squeeze one in. Maybe it's a little late. We shouldn't be playing Catan. Yeah, and then when you play it a little bit faster, you can do that. Sure. All right, here's another one. Very controversial. Friendly robber, also known as the gentleman's rules. Mm -hmm. This is the concept that you can't rob somebody. You, when you roll a seven, you get to move the robber, as discussed. But we're saying you can't rob somebody until they've got three points, until they've kind of got a, established a foothold. Yeah. And this is mentioned uh, in the rulebook for traders and barbarians, so yeah. it, it is an officially sanctioned variant. I'm curious if you prefer playing that way. Uh, it, it's, I, I often experience that, that people uh, uh, did that uh, as a house rule. And uh, because uh, in the beginning, it's very hard when, when uh, rubber blocks are uh, the best of your, your, your um, landscape. And so because I experienced that, that uh, a lot of people love that, so I, I made this variant. And uh, I, I think uh, it's, a, it's a good variant because I, I like that. So everybody has in the, in the start of the game uh, have the possibility to, yeah, to, to um, establish himself in a better way. And uh, so I think uh, that's okay. You prefer to play that way. I notice when I play online, it's almost assumed that you're playing that way. It's kind of just etiquette at this point. Yeah, I, I, I prefer that in, in my games, but I also play it uh, in other way. Speaking of traitors and barbarians, uh, in the instructions, there is a letter from you about uh, all the expansions of Catan and how the first expansion, Seafarers, added space, yeah. and how the second expansion, Cities and Knights, added depth to the game. And then 10 years went by, you didn't release any expansions, and now you release Traders and Barbarians, 
which includes a lot of variants and kind of just twists you can put on the game. Yeah. Do you have any plans for any further expansions past this, or in your mind, is Catan complete? I, five years ago, I, I thought uh, Catan is complete. <laughs> but uh, now uh, five years um, are over, and I think there will be uh, a, a good reason and a new um, reason for doing perhaps uh, a fourth uh, uh, um, expansion. But more, I, I cannot tell you at the moment. Do you have any idea how seafarers kind of, uh, like we said, increase the size? What would be the focus of this game? How would you grow the grow Catan? People like uh, a lot uh, to discover in uh, Catan. So one of the um, most uh, uh, played uh, games in the Catan Online world is uh, um, a version uh, variant where you have to discover the landscapes. And um, so I think this um, uh, theme of um, expansion could be could be discovery. You kind of dabble in that a little bit in Seafarers, uh, where there's a few variants where some of the tiles start flipped over, and then when you get there, you turn them over and you kind of discover what you're about to settle on. But there's also elements in Seafarers that were expanded uh, upon later. There's elements of Cities and Nights in Seafarers, too, that were later blown out to a full game. Mm. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how you do that. Catan, uh, you designed a lot of games before that. Are you surprised this is the one that took off, or when you were making it, did you know this was something special? I... I, I... I had a feeling that there's something special because um, um, it uh, appeals more to to my friends and, and to my family than the other game. Uh, you know, I had uh, three games of the year before, and um, the Catan was the fourth uh, game of the year. But um, all games before, um, yeah, were, were good games, but but uh, there was a little bit missing. And uh, Katana had a feeling, okay, that it's it's uh, the, my best game I, I did. Uh, in, and I uh, didn't expect this a success because I thought uh, the rules are too hard, too difficult. It's too much rules uh, uh, for for normal people who, which, uh, who play not so often. Uh, but I was overwhelmed that, uh, um, uh, from the success that um, I... I, uh, this was an error for me. For me. I heard someone point out that not only was Catan currently the top-selling toy on Amazon.com, but they said it was likely to continue to be the top-selling toy for the rest of the century. Do you think that's possible? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think uh, with the experience from, from the last year, of experience how many people um, uh, stayed by, by the game or... Uh, um, played it over years, not only for for a month or for two months. It could be. Uh, I I hope so. Well, for what it's worth, I think you have a pretty good chance. As popular as it is, I'm still meeting people all the time that either just learned how to play or want to learn how to play. I think there's still a lot of room to grow, and it's still exploding. Congratulations on the success, and thank you so much, so so much for making the time to talk to us today. This was such a treat for me. Yeah, thank you, Jeff, for, for, for your um, uh, um, questions and for the talk. Thank you so much, Jeff. It was an honor. Oh, the honor was mine. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think that just actually happened. I think Klaus Teuber was really on this show. And the craziest part is I am just as excited about next week's guest, Nicholas Gerwich, creator of the Perry Bible Fellowship. If you're not familiar with the Perry Bible Fellowship, you have some homework to do. Go to pbfcomics.com. That is pbfcomics.com. And uh, clear out some time because you've got some catching up to do. Hey! New option for listening to this show. In addition to posting it on iTunes and at jeffrubinjeffrubinshow.com, you can also listen to this show in its enhanced version with pictures on YouTube at youtube.com 